Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Broke Girls Art School. In today's episode, I will be giving a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I completed my latest commission piece. And I'll show you guys all the different techniques I used and hopefully help you out and help you learn something new. So make sure to subscribe if you like the video and drop a comment and let me know what you thought. So the first thing you're going to want to do is lightly erase around the areas that you'll be burning just to get a little bit of that graphite off, but leave enough to where you can see it. If you want to look at a tutorial at how I stencil my art projects, I will drop a link in the description below, so feel free to check that out. Uh, the second thing you're going to want to do is outline your subject matter. Just a basic, I like doing bolder outlines with things just so they're that much more readable from a distance. Um, like I said in my previous videos, I'm also a tattoo artist and neo-traditional is my favorite style to work with. So I like to translate that type of style into my wood burnings as well. I just find it the most readable and um, I'm a big fan of that high contrast, especially when working with wood. And a technique I use while lining those, like the fur at the bottom, uh, kind of taper the line out going thinner at the ends to get that texture more readable. And here I'm doing some more fine lines. The beautiful thing about pyography is that you can add as many little details as you want, especially if you get like the tip that I was using there is a very small ballpoint tip from Colwood Burners and I can get tons of fine little details in with that so when you look at it up close it's just that much more stunning. And the next step I was taking is just doing that basic circle. I'll be blacking out that area later in the video just to really make that goat's head pop. Here I'm just going in and doing all those fine little line details in the horns. Trust me guys, that extra time you take to do those little details, your customers will notice and they'll appreciate your work that much more. So here I'm going in with my shader. Like I said, I love doing super high contrast, so I wanted to make sure that I had almost my darkest black in the horns. And then I'll be going in with my Dremel tool later in the video to add white highlights. Here's blocking in some more dark areas in the ear here, really making it pop out. Same with that solid black, almost solid black around the eyes gives it a lot more depth when you use your full contrast value. And that's why I love basswood the most, or basswood, however you say it, just because it's such a light colored wood that you have that much more opportunity for, you know, really expanding your lights and darks. just getting some mid-tone shading in around the nose and that third eye. And I like doing kind of a whip shading like as you can see at the top of the nose I'm going from like a dark to light value still staying with sticking with the mid-tones but I'm getting the shape of the musculature in the face even though it's kind of a stylized face you can still show muscle structure. Here, darkening up the fur underneath the chin just to make it look that much more 3D. I go up and duplicate the same thing on the opposite side of the horn. You want to make sure you keep the same light source, especially if you're freehand drawing something, just keep that in mind. This I was doing it for a customer, so it was based off of a reference photo, so I could just copy down what was already in the picture. 
But yeah, if you're doing your own art, make sure that you keep your light source in mind so your shadows are accurate throughout the piece. All right, so here I'm going in and freehanding some of the stuff in the background. He wanted some candles and some uh, cool satanic art. No judgment on my end. I'll burn anything people want me to. So here I decided to do some candles with 666 and the flames, making it a little bit more hardcore. All right, and then here I'm just outlining those candles so they can stick out from the background and I can get a nice clean burn around those flames. And I'll be going in with my shader in a little bit here and uh, you know, adding some cool flame looking texture. And for smaller areas like that, I like using my round tip shader, but I'll just use the very tip of it because I can still get it in those little nooks and crannies so I can make it look detailed without going in with my fine liner. I can kind of get all that detail in just with my shader. All right, and then the next step I'll be taking here is grabbing my Dremel tool and going around the edges of all this stuff the candles, the flames, and then I'll be going around the ghost head as well. Cause I wanted to black out the background behind it just to really make it that much more 3D and pop out from the background. So going around the goat's head here, I stuck with my Dremel to get that white line right outside of the black lines that I did initially. You want to make sure that you're not Dremeling over the black lines that you initially did. You want to keep those black lines from the start because it just adds that much more contrast having the black against the white, almost white. I got this Dremel tool over at Home Depot. They're only like 60 bucks and they come with some decent tips for them. Uh, it's really been a game changer for me. It adds so much more contrast and I can throw so much more detail in my projects. So if you're getting serious into wood burning, I would highly recommend getting a Dremel tool. I use it all the time. And here I'm using my heavy duty round tip shader, pretty much the same shader as I was using for the rest of the burn, but this one's a little bit thicker. So it's the, the metal is thicker, so it's better for burning at high temperatures. Um, yeah, burning at a super high temp for this, but staying light on the surface of the wood. If you're burning with a high temperature, you don't wanna leave your tip sitting in the same spot for too long because then you'll get deep indents and crevices in the wood and I just like it better smooth. So it's a consistent texture. You can mess around with burning different textures into the wood, um, but yeah, I just like keeping it smooth. All right, so now that we have that background all blacked out, I'm gonna take my scorch marker. You should check them out. It's a great product, I love using it. And I actually took the tip off of my scorch marker and was dipping my paintbrush into the fluid and then just spattering it around. So how the scorch marker works is you apply the liquid and then you just heat up whatever area you applied it to and it gives that effect like those dark spots. And here I'm just going in with my torch to darken those up. And I wanted to torch like dark, almost black around the edges just to give it that much more contrast and then light, like leaving the torching light right around that circle. So that gave me a cool texture in the background. Thanks everyone for swinging by to another episode of Broke Girls Art School. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you guys want to watch some other videos with tips and pointers on how to apply a stencil to your wood burn or how to seal and epoxy your wood burn, I'll put the links in the description below for a couple of my other tutorial videos. Um, if you want to see some more content and some more tutorials, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. 
And yeah, let me know what you guys thought. I hope I helped you learn something new.